Hey guys, in this video, Ryan's going to show how he drew Deadpool for Marvel Snap. For those of you who don't know, Marvel Snap is Marvel's digital card game similar to Hearthstone. They have to commission hundreds of pieces of artwork from freelance artists all over the world. He's going to go through the various techniques he used to create the card and share his thoughts on how to get a career started in the arts. By the way, we'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Ryan, but more on that later. What advice would you give to someone wanting to get their career started as an artist? The number one thing I would say is to keep drawing. That's where your your heart and your mind is going to be at when you're working on this is within the content of the, the work that you're doing. So you don't want to lose interest. You want your work to to stand out. And so you want to be noticed a lot. So if you're not noticed, you're not going to get picked to work on these pieces. The, the thing I would recommend to young people out there trying to get into just drawing for entertainment, draw for games, toys and comics and cartoons, is to just create your own or just get on a project. If you can't get on a project, you create your own, create your own project and just try building something. That's gonna create, that's gonna give you the, the opportunity to test it out and try it out, learn what to do, what not to do. And then eventually you're going to get noticed at some point. If you're not submitting a, a portfolio or a resume somewhere, then I would say just build your own and try to get noticed as much as possible. Because you want to stand out, you have to wow people. You have to, your art has to grab people from far. So when you're drawing and you're drawing a character and you're thinking of a pose, you want to think of the most dynamic the most exciting way of expressing that pose, how to make it cool enough that your that that your artwork stands out from the bunch. Basically, just make it hot. Hey guys, before moving on, I'm going to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Ryan. He put together a tutorial in Gumroad where he goes through the fundamentals of drawing. In the tutorial, he goes through his strategies for drawing people, how to render and an introduction to inking. There are also assignments that accompany each lesson to follow along with. These are the skills he uses daily as a professional comic artist on games, comics, movies, and TV shows. For the first 24 hours this video is up, use the discount code CHIMICHANGAS for 20% off. Thanks, and back to the video. Did you deviate from your normal style while drawing this? Actually, no, I didn't deviate. I, I stuck with my standard style of drawing comics for doing this, so. But it was pretty easy. Um, they they didn't require me to to change any of my strategies or my techniques. And the only problem, or not necessarily a problem, the only loophole was I just had to get approved before each stage. What was the promise for this commission? Uh, a description that came in the form of an email or a message on a form and said draw Deadpool that was it <laughs> so I said okay so I had to come up with a cool pose and come up with something cool knowing I am drawing this for a card and knowing that there will be parallaxing going on in there so sometimes they're, they're pretty descriptive on what they need and then I'll get a I'll get an email that says you know, hey, this is what what we need. We need to draw this character. Sometimes it's pretty vague. Sometimes it's just draw Deadpool, or they'll say, hey, draw Deadpool in this specific arena. And based on that arena, that gives me an idea of what would Deadpool do while performing a specific task. How would he pose himself? And then from from there, I just draw a couple samples and do a couple. Rough, rough sketches and then send it in and then that's it what were your materials for this commission easy standard pencil typical inks standard inks and uh and a bristol board how long does it take to do one of these cards not take that long it took i would say sketch to approval to final i would say about a week it really depends on on how fast the feedback comes in but once i start drawing it doesn't take long at all as you can see however long this inking process took that, that's just the inking part still have the pencils too then i have to clean up 
side of it, which I have to get it scanned in and layered while I shoulder shop. How difficult is the post-processing and the scanning? Not hard at all. I have a large flatbed scanner in my office that I just use. I just put it on there, scan it in, import it into the Photoshop, and then from there you do all the cleanup and then you turn it in, which is done. I have an HP 7, 790, I think it's called. Do you have any tips for someone wanting to improve their inking? For inking, you need to have a steady hand. So you're only going to get that from practicing. You're not going to get it in two months, three months, possibly not nine months. It's going to take some time for, for practicing to actually get a nice, steady, smooth hand. It took me years of doing it to actually, to actually get to a point where I kind of understood, understand it. You want to pivot from your wrist and your elbows as the number, as the top spots you want to pivot when you're inking. How important are art fundamentals to doing these pieces? Fundamentals is extremely important. Without your fundamentals, you are highly likely to lay down a rough foundation and you're going to end up with stiff arms, stiff postures, stiff angles. Your, your, your pieces won't work together. So you have to lay down your fundamentals first before you actually go in and commit to actually cleaning up the line work or executing any shading or rendering. Do you have any tips for someone struggling to study their fundamentals? Stay loose, stay as loose as possible. Stick to your fundamentals, meaning all your primitives and you just move fast. Don't draw small, draw large. I would recommend those strategies for to, to, to capture dynamics and get better at angles. Do you have any networking tips for someone looking to find work? To network, I would say tap into what we all have access to, what we all are currently already tapped into, which is social media. That's probably the quickest, easiest way to get your work noticed. Just plug it in, get noticed, raise your audience. And, you know, because remember the audience that you're raising, they're full of writers, directors, editors, producers. So you want to entertain them also. They will call you, they will email you, and they will get you on a project if they really like your work. Have you ever forgotten how to draw? If so, how do you work past that in your professional career? Forget how to draw? I don't think I've ever forgotten how to draw. I've probably lost motivation to draw, but I forget how to draw. To me, once you once you learn it and you lock it in, it's there for life. It's not going anywhere. It's, you're basically just planted a seed and you just have to keep watering it. And you turn that into a different style or a different angle of your approach. That's, that's how you, you innovate. That's how you change. If you adapt, that's how you grow. But if you lose interest, and use motivation, then that's when you hit the reset button and you have to find that mo that motivation to find that interest and you have to get back into it. So typically for me, if I lose interest, then, then I'll find something else to do. Like I'll do some gardening, I'll go for a walk, go for a hike, go to the beach. Um, I'll, I'll go to the movies. Those things are like things that I do to break away from my art table just to get away from a little bit not think about my art i think of what i was trying to do go find motivation from some another source and then come back once you come back figure it out for me another one another one probably the most important one is sleep just gotta gotta get that sleep when you sleep and wake up early in the morning crisp and early, like four or five in the morning, you get to it and start working. How should a beginner practice drawing comic art? Probably 
the best strategy is to reference another comic book artist that you really like and try to copy them first. Then in time, you can branch off and start doing your own style. The reason I say that is because comic art is somewhat unique in the giant scheme of, uh, of, of art that's out there. You know, you have your fine arts, you have your, your creative arts, you have your concept arts, but when it comes to comic art, it kind of, it's almost in its own lane. So I would say you would need to reference someone who's done it and who's doing it and who's, who, who can do it way better than you and then try to mimic some of their styles and their patterns because there are specific styles and patterns, specific rendering strokes that you need to apply that you're only going to find in comics or a comic style direction that you won't find pretty much anywhere else. So um, I, I, try to, I try to reference uh, someone you really enjoy looking at first as a beginner should i worry about style as a beginner style is something that's inside of you that's who you are so i wouldn't be too concerned about style your style will come out eventually i would focus more on the fundamentals and the specific strategy of how to how to how to set up the human body, how to set up your lighting, how to set up your pencil strokes. In, in, in time, your style will come out, so I wouldn't rush it too much. I wouldn't try to focus too much on style. You can take some time and polish your style and put some focus on that area. For the most part, I wouldn't be too, too concerned as a beginner, because as a beginner, your number one goal is to just basically do some good art. Just produce good art, and in time you can put a specific style on top of the good art. And to, to have good art, you need to have good fundamentals. How would you recommend somebody get into a habit of practicing their fundamentals? Fundamentals are your basic primitives um, and the application of the basic primitives. Your fundamentals never change from the time you were a novice getting into this to the time you're a professional who's been doing this for 90 years the fundamentals are exactly the same it doesn't change the only thing that changes is how you apply it or how do you use it as a foundation you in the beginning you can use it uh, by actually you actually drawing it out first, drawing your fundamentals out first, but in time when you become like a master, you don't have to draw it out anymore. You just immediately go straight to the final line quality, the final line that you're looking for, but the fundamentals are still there because the fundamentals are in your head. It's still there. So you can literally see it without seeing it. So that's where I would put a lot of my focus or a lot of my energy. Do you think you learn more about drawing from art school or from your job? Oh, definitely from my job. I've only gone to one art school and any other classes you would say, it's just me going into draw sessions with different artists, you know, live sketch se sessions or going to like Starbucks or Barnes and Noble and just meeting up with other artists or, you know, just similar coffee shops, wherever we, we can meet up and then we just all draw together. Learning on the job is, is very common. It's something that I wouldn't be too concerned about, like wondering, you know, am I good enough to do this or good enough to, to, to do that? Once you're in there and you're working, you're going to to learn from other people around you, especially other professionals who's doing the similar job or doing something in a similar vein that you're doing. You're going to see how, how another artist did it or how, how another artist is doing it and then that's going to help feed your, your brain and feed your, your direction and your quality. 
and in time it'll come out. Do you think having a community as an artist is important? And if so, how do you recommend building one? Absolutely. Community, community is very important. Join, if you're an amazing artist and you're just an amazing artist and you don't have the ability to express your art or demonstrate it or plug it into a specific forum, then you're just an amazing artist in the corner. You want to be able to 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 bounce ideas back and forth through other artists. Feedback is very important as an artist. You have to, that's how you learn. That's how you grow. You learn from people critiquing your art. You learn from people saying things about you. Saying things that that's going to benefit you. It's going to motivate you, or it's going to break you down also because that's going to help you sharpen your 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 weak points the areas that you're you're, you're lacking on your if you don't understand how to draw hands you don't understand how to draw feet you don't understand how to how to do facial expressions things like that will get better in time as you're going so you and the only way it gets better is by you know getting ideas from other people and getting feedback learning practicing drawing looking at how other artists is doing that's the community that's the the people you rub elbows with um and you're just learning from each other that's one of the best things you want to do um don't lock yourself into one style or one pat pattern or one pattern and build on different patterns build on different styles conform you know modify learn from as many people as you can and bring it into your your world bruce lee did that with his, with his his martial arts he didn't just pick one style and stuck with it he learned from multiple styles and brought it into his his uh his way of how he fights and he just took what's best and he just made a, a brand new art style a brand new martial arts style out of it so big up to bruce lee <laughs>